Corr Engamont. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. It's my great pleasure to rise and speak on this appropriation bill. And it gives me an opportunity to talk about the Turnbull government's achievements and the many ways in which we are delivering for jobs and growth. Uh, before I do that, I do want to place on the record my profound uh, concern in relation to the member for Bendigo's comments about health funding. Uh, we've seen a situation in Victoria where the Victorian government has made an improper grab for money for which it was not owed some $73 million, and it's now going around frightening local hospitals, local CEOs, making claims that are simply false. This is an improper grab for cash. Uh, they did not run the calculations properly in relation to the formula, and uh, what the member for Bendigo has just said in relation to that matter is absolutely wrong. The Victorian government needs to fess up. This has not happened in any other state. And, uh, the Victorian government's uh, uh, tricky accounting um, has not uh, gone by without being noticed by us and being corrected, uh, and we will not stand for this misrepresentation both from members opposite and also from the Victorian government. Mr Deputy Speaker, uh, at this time as we transition out of the mining boom, and into the new economy, the innovation economy. Uh, I'm very proud to see that we have created over 300,000 new jobs last year. Now, this is the best record in terms of job creation since 2006. And the doomsdayers on the opposite side, Mr Deputy Speaker, the likes of the member for Corio, uh, spoke endlessly about, uh, about the skyrocketing unemployment in our region. Well, Mr Deputy Speaker, we are seeing some of the best unemployment figures we've seen in a long time. At the moment, we've just announced, as we've just seen from the ABS, a 5.2 per cent unemployment rate in the Geelong region. And while there are pressures on the local economy, there's no doubt about that, particularly in manufacturing. Of course, we lost Ford under the previous Labor government. Let's not forget that. But let's not forget that there are 500 or so Ford workers continuing to work in our great city. Uh, but we are seeing some wonderful success stories in our local employment uh, figures that are coming through. And of course, uh, nationally, the ANZ Job Ads Survey in January of 2016 shows that job ads are now 11.3 per cent higher than they were 12 months ago. Mr Deputy Speaker, everything that the Turnbull government is doing is focused on driving jobs and growth, the jobs of the future not the regressive policies that we have seen from the other side, from the Labor Party, a party that believes that you can prosper by taxing home buyers, by its smokers' tax, its capital gains tax, and its absolutely unbelievable refusal to support our attack on multinational tax avoidance. The Greens showed much greater economic responsibility when they joined with us to vote for that legislation to combat the shifting, the improper shifting of profits by multinational companies into other jurisdictions. And what did Labor do? It voted against this legislation. So we are seeing time and time again. I mean, the, unfortunately, the Labor Party had some five billion dollars of its own savings, which it proposed prior to the 2013 election, that it's now blocking in the Senate. So we are seeing gross recklessness from the Labor Party, from members opposite, and of course we are seeing that in spades with the negative gearing policy that the Labor Party has put forward, a policy which will punish the many thousands of nurses, midwives, metal workers, teachers, the people who rely on negative gearing to give their family a bit of a head start. And by taking one third of the demand out of the established property market, this will do enormous damage to the home buyers market. Uh, Labor has simply not thought this through. They don't understand that when you destroy confidence in a market as important as the property market, that ricochets throughout the economy, Mr Deputy Speaker. So this is another example of a ill thought through, reckless, irresponsible policy which shows that the Labor Party is simply not up to governing. Mr Deputy Speaker, I'm incredibly proud of our government's achievements. We have abolished the carbon and mining taxes. We finalised three free trade agreements with China, Japan and Korea. Of course, our TPP is the fourth major free trade agreement. We're delivering the lowest company tax rate 
for small businesses in almost 50 years are $5.5 billion of incentives for small business uh, through the last budget. Uh, we understand that small business is the engine room of our economy. Uh, we're tackling the hard questions, the Harper Review, uh, looking at how we can change competition law to drive jobs, innovation and to drive the jobs of the future. We're investing some $50 billion in infrastructure. Our $1.1 billion national innovation and science agenda shows, Mr Deputy Speaker, that we are focused on the future. What we need to do is a responsible contemporary government looking at the opportunities for us as a nation that lie ahead. But, Mr Deputy Speaker, we're also tackling the hard issues on our industrial front. Uh, in Victoria, in particular, construction costs run at some 30 per cent higher than any other state, and that is because of the unlawlessness, the lawlessness in uh, the, the building and construction sector. Uh, we've seen some terrible stories of corruption, of standover tactics by some union bosses, not the ordinary men and women who are members of unions, who work hard, who go to work and they expect their union bosses to, the, to do the right thing by them. Uh, they want to make sure that when they go to work that their, their business thrives, the industry thrives, and we are not seeing that particularly in Victoria. So that's why we do need the Australian Building and Construction Commission, of course, another major uh, initiative for our economy uh, that is being blocked by the Labor Party. Mr Deputy Speaker, I'm uh, very proud of the achievements in the Karangamite electorate delivered by the Turnbull government. Uh, last year we announced a $14 million advanced manufacturing growth centre, an industry growth centre to drive those advanced manufacturing jobs. Uh, jobs in the renewable energy sector, for instance. Uh, a lot of work is, is going into the renewable energy sector to look at how we can improve issues such as battery storage to make sure that we are investing in those wonderful opportunities in renewable energy. Uh, we've announced $2.6 million for the Geelong Region Job Connections program, lots of local job creation programs being rolled out across our region, which have really made a difference on the ground. Mr Deputy Speaker, just yesterday I'm very proud that the new Australian Bureau of Statistics Centre of Excellence, the National Data Acquisition Centre, opened, and that will eventually hire up to 300 people. Uh, a wonderful high-tech centre, another government agency coming to our region, uh, bringing wonderful opportunities. Only about 40 ABS jobs will actually move to Geelong. The rest are all going to be created locally, so that really is absolutely wonderful news. Mr Deputy Speaker, that builds on the incredible investments we've made with the National Disability Insurance Scheme. Of course, the Barwon trial is being rolled out. Uh, many hundreds of millions of dollars are being spent, of course, already, and in excess of $400 million in uh, my own region, with the National Disability Insurance Agency headquarters uh, in Geelong, which is wonderful. And at the moment, there is a tender underway to construct uh, a new building. It will be in excess of $100 million to house not just the NDIA headquarters, but also some 400 jobs people working for the Commonwealth Department of Human Services. So, On top of the new WorkSafe building, which has just been announced, another state Liberal commitment uh, matched by Labor, but again an initiative of the Liberals, uh, we are seeing some wonderful investment being driven into the Karangamite region. Um, Mr Deputy Speaker, one of the very big focuses in our region is infrastructure. And after years of failure when it comes to rolling out MBN broadband, we are now seeing uh, MBN fast broadband under construction or available to more than 70,000 Karangamite homes and businesses by 2017. And this includes the Geelong southern suburbs of Belmont, Highton, Grovedale, Marshall, Wandana Heights and Warren Ponds. Now all on the rollout. Construction begins, Mr Deputy Speaker. In the beginning of 2017, other parts of Geelong later this year, and construction is already underway in places like Ocean Grove, Bowen Heads, Torquay, and Janjuk. So it is wonderful to see this essential infrastructure being delivered. And of course, many parts of Karangamite were left off the MBN rollout by the previous Labor government. Uh, a, a poor, a very poor reflection on the Labor Party, on the previous Labor member 
and on commitment to important infrastructure in large regional cities like the one that I proudly represent. Mr Deputy Speaker, another failure of Labor, no money invested in mobile phone black spots. And it was with great pride, Mr Deputy Speaker, when we announced that there will be 10 mobile base stations rolled out across Karangamite in Apollo Bay, Barongarook, Bowman Downs, Cape Hot Way, Carlisle River, where construction will be completed in a couple of months' time. Great news. Dereal, Jellybrand, Carwarren, Stiglitz and Yodin to service Birragawa. So some 115 of the 141 mobile phone black spots nominated in Karangamite would be addressed by handheld or external antenna coverage. And this is wonderful news. Mr Deputy Speaker, I do have to say uh, we have our Great Ocean Road uh, upgrade uh, underway, wonderful projects for such an iconic road, so important, a centrepiece of our $2.1 billion tourism industry. This is the road that Labor forgot. This is the road that federal Labor vehemently opposed in terms of investing in this road. And, Mr Deputy Speaker, not only is the $50 million making a real difference to communities like Anglesey and Lawn and down in Separation Creek and, of course, Wye River, where there's been a, a, a terrible um, crisis after the bushfires over Christmas. We've just announced the start of construction of a new $4 million Separation Creek Bridge. Uh, but, Mr Deputy Speaker, this road is so important that I am fighting for more funding for this road. This road is so important for road safety, for tourism, for the regional tourism economy, not just for domestic visitors but also international visitors. Uh, we are duplicating the Princess Highway, another very important commitment, an incredible infrastructure project for our region. The first section is almost complete. Um, so real problems uh, with the completion date, I have to say, Mr Deputy Speaker. But it's wonderful to see that the Winchelsea to Colac session is on section is on track, uh, supported, of course, by uh, some $371 million in total of investment. But, Mr Deputy Speaker, we have major infrastructure challenges in our region. The cancellation of the East-West Link has been an absolute disgrace. The Auditor General in Victoria has now disclosed that that has cost Victorians $1.1 billion. This is a project that Labor members opposite, people like the, the Leader of the Opposition, are previously supported. We desperately need a western road link for Geelong and Karangamite and South West Victoria. It's an absolute gridlock trying to drive to Melbourne in peak hour, getting over the, the Westgate Bridge. And what are uh, the Labor Party doing in Victoria? They're doing virtually nothing, Mr Deputy Speaker. Uh, it is an incredible reflection on Labor that we are seeing virtually no progress when it comes to rolling out the infrastructure that we need in our great region. Another example is rail. Mr Deputy Speaker, we are seeing utter chaos with V-line services right across Victoria. It is an absolute shambles. It is costing the Victorian government $4 million a week. And yet the Victorian government is refusing to look at one of the most important infrastructure projects that we need for our region, the duplication of the rail through southern Geelong to service South Geelong, Marshall and Warren Ponds. We need new platforms, a duplicated rail, because people living in Armstrong Creek and all through the southern part of Geelong cannot get the rail services they need. And while there has been uh, the regional rail link that has now been completed, of course it can't be used uh, most of the time at the moment because of the chaos with V-line services, uh, it, is, it is apparent that that is doing more for people living in Western Melbourne than it is for people living in Geelong and Karangamite. And uh, the Labor Party have absolutely taken their foot off the um, accelerator when it comes to rolling out these important uh, infrastructure projects. Another great announcement we've made in the last week, Mr Deputy Speaker, almost $30 billion of additional defence expenditure. And it's wonderful to see our defence white paper, which reinforces the importance of so many wonderful defence projects, including the Land 400 pro program. And I know uh, our city and our region are working very hard to secure a slice of the action of that incredibly important $3 billion project. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker.